Hey everyone, me again. So one topic that keeps coming up on uh, some of my more watched videos, and I realize that I only reference it and then I never actually address it uh, very directly, is the topic of hand select and whether or not you should do it or whether I recommend it, what my experience with it has been. And so to kind of go through that, I have some examples of, of firearms that I purchased online from these you know large batches that come in as opposed to either, you know, going to a gun store or, you know, buying off a forum or anything like that. And this is not all the things I've ever bought online, but this is just a really good illustration, a good uh, sample selection here. So um, before we kind of get into it, uh, what's defined hand select? Because a lot of people don't really seem to understand uh, what exactly that is, or they have some, you know, slight uh, misinterpretation. So um, people, it's not, uh, suppose a, a giant batch of whatever model comes in and there's, you know, several hundred of them and they grade them, say, good to very good. Hand select is not them promising you that you're going to get a very good one um, or that you're going to get like the cream of the crop. All hand select really is, is for a fee, uh, which varies, they're gonna, you know, grab either 10 or 20 or 15 or some amount of these off the rack and pick the uh, the nicest looking one from a cosmetic standpoint. They usually don't do uh, bore condition for hand select. I, I, they Sometimes they, they do, I've seen them, it's happened, I guess, but uh, gen generally not. So that's kind of the definition of, of what it is. So let me kind of go over some, uh, I guess, five reasons as to why I think you shouldn't do it. So reason number one is you're paying for a service that you're not actually sure you're ever going to get. Uh, you know, you place your order, you pay your extra fee, and you're going to get a gun, hopefully, and you won't know whether they did anything at all. You know, they're not going to put together a video saying, you know, Mr. John Q. Public, uh, order number 101, uh, here's the, the 10 rifles that we grabbed off the rack for you, and this is, you know, so-and-so who's going to pick them based on XYZ criteria, and the serial number so-and-so, and go ahead and, uh, yeah, that's that's what we do. Now, if they did that, which I don't know that anybody has ever, uh, you know, I don't know that any retailer would take the time or the effort. Uh, it would be pretty expensive, uh, you know, labor intensive on their part to do it. But if they did that, then this whole list would dissipate. So, but the point is, is you don't know what you're getting. See, for example, if you're paying extra for a, you know, a certain manufacturer, you're going to know whether or not you get it, you know, right away. As soon as you open the box, you know, you pay a little extra for a long branch Enfield. You expect to see that. And if you don't get it, you know. Uh, with this one, you have simply have no idea whether they did anything at all. And so it seems like it's not the best investment to be spending money on things that you can't even be sure you're getting. So reason number two is, even if they are doing something, you're never really sure that it's worth the difference that you're paying. So these fees, I've kind of seen them vary. Some of them are as little as $20 extra for hand select. Some of them are maybe as much as $200 I've seen for, you know, if you're getting into some of these antique things. And you just can't be sure of the value, you know, whether you're getting the value out of it or not. I often see this comment in reviews saying, oh, I paid a hand select and boy, am I glad I did because what I got was great. And I keep thinking, well, you can't possibly say that because you don't know what you would have received otherwise. Uh, you know, maybe it would have been just as good. The luck of the draw, could, maybe you could have gotten something even better or maybe it's better in one way and worse in another. Maybe you have more bluing, but a cracked handguard or vice versa. So, you know, you're gonna pay $200 extra dollars sometimes is it really worth, is what you get $200 better than what you would have received otherwise? You'll never know. You don't know the value of what you're getting. You're just gonna get something. So for example, this Carcano here, this one actually was a hand select, and as you can see, it's in really rather rough shape. Um, and you have no recourse, of course. You know, you could say, oh, I got this piece of junk here. Um, you promised me, you know, hand select. And they'll say, well, hand select is, you know, we picked the best of 10 or 20 or whatever it is. You don't know what you the other ones looked like, and so, um, because they don't promise you anything good, you know, you're just going to get something and you won't know what the other ones look like. And so how much difference did it make to pay hand select? This is another reason why I think you shouldn't do it. And reason number three is you don't really know the quality of the work that they're actually doing. Um, so how thoroughly are they actually looking things over, assuming they do anything at all? Are they just kind of looking at it, you know, glance into the crate and see 10 sitting at the top and they'll say, you know, oh, that one looks about best and send it to you? Are they actually examining them and what criteria are they using? Any of that stuff, you don't really know any of that, you know. Uh, I can assure you they're not doing as thorough a job as if you would if you were in that position, you know. If somebody said, hey, I have 10 Enfields available and you can go ahead and come on down and pick the best one, they're certainly not doing as good a job as you would in that position. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, for all you know, you're just paying them to kind of do a quick spot check off the rack and 
that's that's really all that's being done and if that's as you know whatever the opposite of thorough is i guess as negligently as they do it um is that worth the uh, the additional twenty dollars or two hundred dollars depending on what it happens to be i would say not and that feeds into reason number four you don't even know how qualified these people are to make this decision for you so who's making this selection? Now, a lot of these companies like to portray themselves as, oh, we're, you know, we're as into this stuff as you are. We love it. We know it as much as anyone else. And so our whole company, you know, we're a company of experts and enthusiasts and we love all of this stuff. And so you're kind of counting on them knowing what they're looking at. But, uh, for example, in, in the uh, instance of this K98K, when I uh, dealt with their service and parts department, they evidently didn't know the difference between an M48 uh, Yugo uh, Mauser and a K98K, and they sent me the wrong stuff. So are these the people you, you know, could really trust to make that decision for you? I would say probably not. I mean, would you trust a mechanic that didn't know the difference between a Land Cruiser and a Land Rover uh, to, you know, do some kind of a pre-purchase inspection for you? Uh, probably not. Uh, so that would be the fourth reason. And reason number five, hopefully I don't struggle to explain this too much, but uh, basically it's that I've never really seen that it makes a difference. So these are not everything that I bought with hand select or without. There's additional examples. But overall, as I mentioned in point number two, you can't point to any individual one and say, oh, hand select, you know, would have been better or would have been better not to. Either way, you don't know what you would have received otherwise. But when you've done it enough times, you kind of start seeing a pattern. Then it starts to be more like data. Um, and I just haven't seen that pattern that, you know, on average, I do any better. So, for example, this K98K that came broken, that the front end was in the white, uh, that was hand select. This uh, this end field here, other than that gouge on the stock, which kind of takes, takes away from it a little bit, but it's not too bad. Um, and I'm sure that finish has been refurbished. But nonetheless, this is a really nice example otherwise, I think. And this was not a hand select. Uh, this uh, Carcano was a hand select. It looks super rough. This uh, this this Mosin here, um, you know, the kind of rough wartime production quality, notwithstanding, uh, is actually in really decent shape. It's all matching. Was not a hand select. This uh, Polish uh, Tokarev clone also not a hand select. It looks pretty decent. Uh, the light may exaggerate, you know, some of the the surface stuff um, as it does. But in any case, uh, having done this enough times, I I haven't noticed that on average I do any better one way or another, and I don't base that just on like my own findings, you know, based on what you see in forums and other people's reviews. Uh, some people, uh, there's just not doesn't seem to be any pattern, any reason to do it uh, on average. It just doesn't seem to make much difference. Basically, it probably de depend. Ugh, sorry, depends more on like the quality of the batch in and of itself you know um if you're looking at for example okay so anything from that ethiopian stockpile you kind of know the average quality of it and it's kind of a or lack thereof i guess i should say and it's kind of the luck of the draw maybe you'll get something a little bit on the nicer end maybe not i don't see that it makes a difference um same thing it's it's, it's about you know the overall quality of the entire batch i think says a lot more than hand select ever generally does so I guess that's about all. Um, thank you for watching.